The Sky 6 is a planetarium program that allows the user to visualize the night sky. You can set it up for any place on Earth and for any particular time. Our version happens to be set up for uh, the latitude and longitude in Andover, Mass. And I've also got it set up for the present time. This program also allows us to connect to our telescope so that we can visualize the direction uh, that our telescope is pointed in. So I'm gonna do that now. If I click on this green telescope here, it connects to the control system software and so it knows where our telescope is pointed. So you can see the crosshairs here, that shows us where the telescope is pointed. I can also move the telescope from within the Sky 6 program. That's pretty easy to do. If I click here on some object, it brings up an object information window, and there's all sorts of information contained in that window, actually. You can see the magnitude of the object, the right ascension and declination for the present time, and also the right ascension and declination uh, in the year 2000. The reason that these are not the same coordinates is that the Earth's axis is precessing, and because right ascension and declination is tied to the direction of the Earth's axis, uh, these coordinates actually change over time. Another useful bit of information that's contained in this window is when the object rises and when it sets, and also the transit time. That's the time when the object is passing the meridian, so it is at the highest point in the sky for that object. It gives you some other information as well. This says that this object is a minor planet, which means it's an asteroid. And you can scroll down and look at some of the other bits of information as well. Another thing that you can do within this window is look at some pictures related to the object. That's what multimedia gives you. Now, this is an asteroid, and so uh, the multimedia option for this particular object um, actually just gives me a bunch of random pictures of asteroids. Fun to look at, uh, actually not directly related to this particular object, but a lot of times the multimedia images are. So for example, if I look at the Galaxy M33 and then I click on multimedia, it will show me images of that particular galaxy. There's one last tab in the object information window uh, that you should know about, and that's this telescope tab. I'll say something more about that in a moment, but first what I wanna do is just show you how to move the telescope from its current position to the object that I've chosen. So what you do is you go to the green telescope within the object information window, click on it, and the program will ask you to confirm that you want to make this slew or move from this position to this position. And if you say okay, then a new window will come up telling you that the object is moving. It went away very fast. Uh, it came up right here momentarily. Usually it stays up until the object finishes moving, and I don't know why it hasn't done that this time. So there it is. Now the telescope is pointed to the asteroid. Let's actually move it a little further to the moon uh, because I want to say something more about this telescope tab, and it might help to have the telescope on the moon to describe this. So let's say that you move the telescope to the moon and then you go upstairs and look through the telescope and you find that it's not perfectly centered. Well, at that point, you would use the hand paddle and you would center the moon in the field of view of the telescope. If you are imaging and the telescope is not centered on the camera chip, then you might use the hand paddle to move the object to the center of the camera chip. Once you have the object centered, then the telescope really is pointed at that object. And at that point, you might like to tell the planetarium program, no, this is really the direction the telescope needs to be pointed in if we wanna look at this object. So you click on the telescope tab and you push this button, uh, sync. And what that does is it has the program uh, take that information uh, and it, it will um, then know that this is really the position the telescope needs to be in to point at that object. And then your pointing will be better, um, meaning that when you point to another object, the planetarium program will do a better job of getting the telescope right there. This is a little bit dangerous, and so you should be careful about using this tab. Um, what can sometimes happen is, uh, let's say you point at the moon, 
and then you go upstairs and you get the moon centered in the field of view and then you en you enjoy looking at the moon and then you come back downstairs and you've got this telescope tab open and you decide okay now i want to go to this object m34 or ng1039 and ngc1039 and uh, so you're on the telescope tab and you push sync well what that will do is it will tell the telescope okay now you're really pointed at this object but you're not really pointed at that object you're pointed at the moon what you really wanted to do was you wanted to go into general and click on the green telescope but what you actually did was you clicked on sync and so this will totally mess you up if you use it at the wrong time and so you should be careful but on the other hand it's very useful if the telescope isn't quite centered all right so uh one or two more things so uh we're we're on the moon here i'm going to click this button here and you can see what that does is it centers the window on the moon and if I go up to the magnifying glass with the plus sign in it, I can zoom in. And eventually, I will get to the point where I see a square, a red square. And uh, it's labeled DFM 16 plus apogee what this means is that if when we have our camera attached to the dfm telescope this is the imaging field of the camera so interestingly enough it just barely uh, fits the moon but in any event uh, it's kind of useful to know um, what the field of the camera should be because if you take an image um, and it's it's not the moon it's just some star field and you want to check to see where the telescope is pointed at that star field you can zoom in you can compare what you see on the sky program to what you see on uh, on your actual image and then you can tell if you're on the right field of view or not all right one last thing Sometimes you might like to know where an object is going to be at some time uh, later in the evening. So for example, let's say that it's two in the afternoon and you go up to the observatory and uh, you're planning to image this asteroid 3841 DeChico uh, at one in the morning. Well, if it's two in the afternoon and you look at the coordinates at two in the afternoon, they're not gonna be the same as the coordinates at one in the morning because of course the asteroid is going to be drifting across the, the, um, the celestial sphere. So um, what you can do is you can disconnect from the telescope and then you can go to data and time and you can change the time. So let's change the time to one in the morning and actually at that point we will want to re-click on asteroid de Chico and these are the coordinates the right ascension and declination that asteroid de Chico will have at that time I'm not sure why but if you watch those coordinates as you change the time, you can see that they aren't changing. You have, for some reason, you have to re-click on the object in order to get them to update. But anyway, um, so I mentioned that you should disconnect the telescope before you do this. This is because if you have the telescope connected and you start changing the time, sometimes the program will uh, think that the telescope has gone down to the horizon and uh, that's not really a good thing for the telescope and so the program freaks out so you shouldn't do that just disconnect from the telescope play around with the time and then when you're ready to go back to the current time you click on this button here that takes you back to the current time and at that point it's safe to connect back to the telescope